watch symposium I'm Austin. All right, so what am I wearing today? Wristwatch check. My very first Seiko 5. And I wore this all day yesterday, today. And for about two weeks, I was wearing the Hydronaut Black Dial 89190. And I wore it for two weeks. And when I took it off day before yesterday, I checked the accuracy and of course, you know, when I started wearing it, it was dead on. I said at the time dot is. And day before yesterday when I checked it, it was plus six. So pretty unreal accuracy there. And I had talked about getting that watch serviced. I have to get this watch serviced at some point. And, you know, I've never had it serviced. I don't know how water resistant it is. So I wouldn't take this in water and I haven't taken it in water. And it seems sort of a ridiculous idea to take a well-running watch and pay you know about 700 usd to have rolex take a look at it and more than likely give it back to me running not as well so so i can take that in and for 60 bucks i can get a rolex pouch or maybe even a tudor pouch and have the seals checked of course it's not as satisfying as having a a full service and overhaul and you know when you do that you get get all the papers and you get the the okay from Rolex and you know everything's on the up and up and really the service history of that watch is sort of a big question mark right now um, but uh, that said I, I gave it a bath I washed it and it seems to be fine you know I didn't see any fogging under the crystal and that's kind of nice to be able to wash your watch but you know I wouldn't take it swimming and that's kind of one of the things I wanted to do Anyway, I washed it and uh, it looked so beautiful, I didn't want to put it on my grubby wrist. So yesterday I broke this out and, um, you know, I mean, this is, uh, it's a good, honest watch. And I tell you, I'm really enjoying the fact that it's got a day and a date. And, you know, a day is a great thing to have on a watch and it's amazing how stingy Rolex says when it comes to the day. I mean, they they make you buy a fancy, soft, precious metal, you know, really luxury day date to get that day. And if you're wearing a professional model Rolex, uh, you're screwed. So, you know, if you're uh, sporting a, a, a Sky Dweller or a GMT Master II, I mean, the day could be pretty damn useful and relevant, but uh, nope, nope, you gotta go with the day date for that. That's a huge, uh, well, problem, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a black mark on Rolex, the fact that they're so stingy with their uh, complications, but uh, you know, if you want the day, you gotta shell out the big box for it. Whereas a Seiko, they're just, you know, for a hundred bucks, you get uh, the day and the date, nice little window there. What a cool, honest watch. Of course, it's not giving me that, that feeling of gravitas that a really nice watch gives you. And, um, and that's because it is a $100 watch. And you know, one of the reasons we buy these multi-thousand dollar timepieces is because everybody can't do it. I mean, you have something that another person doesn't have and many people can't have. And we all want something kind of special, right? It gives it that, uh, you know, that value and uh, a little bit childish, uh, you know, the idea of having something that people can't have, but there's a lot of that at play. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we want something special and, uh, and that's why it's gotta hurt. Um, but that's not to say we can't occasionally appreciate just a nice, honest Seiko. I'm probably gonna wear this uh, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. I mean. I, I didn't have it on my wrist 12 hours yesterday when I was starting to feel antsy. And I thought, you know, what do I do? Do I, do I put on the GMT Master II? Uh, that's certainly got a lot of gravitas. But, you know, one of my uh, deals is uh, all of my really high-end watches are pretty much samey. They're all kind of professional-esque watches. They're 40 millimeters, they're, they're steel. They got the rotating bezel, and uh, you know, in that sense, I, I, trading one for the other isn't like I'm really mixing things up. I mean, 
you know, in that sense, sometimes I think I should go crazy, you know, get a two-tone watch. I was at the sports club yesterday, and I saw this old dude with a two-tone watch, and I thought, two-tone, is that the way to go? Could that mix my routine up a bit, bring some excitement to my life more logically? Um, it probably could, but, uh, you know, it's one thing seeing a two-tone watch at the sports club, and it's another getting together five, six, seven thousand USD and actually going to buy one. I don't think I'm a two-tone guy, to be honest, but um, uh, but I could always try it. The thing is, if you're a two-tone guy and you think you wanna sort of try a, say, steel professional Rolex, no harm done. I mean, you could easily flip that watch and probably make a buck. Going the opposite way and picking up a two-tone, that's a money-losing proposition if I try to get out of it. So uh, anyway, um, these are some random thoughts today. Uh, I kind of wanted to make a video and I didn't have any really one theme to uh, make the video about, but I did have a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Um, I will say that you can't put yourself on a list here in Japan, but you can in Britain. And you know what? If I was in Britain, I would be on every AD's list for either a GMT or a blue dialed sky dweller or a daytona or a sub i mean i would i would make the rounds in london and put myself on a list now are they going to throw away my my contact information and chuck it in the garbage maybe but if it works out works out you know if you have a chance to buy one of these contemporary you know 40 millimeter steel professional rolexes you buy the watch and ask questions later. Do you want the watch? Who cares? If you just get it and then you talk about whether you want it or not because if you don't, you stand to make a couple thousand USD. Look, I mean, some people say you shouldn't put yourself on a list if you don't want the watch. I mean, it, it takes away from other people that genuinely love and want the watch. Look, 90% of the people on these lists are probably opportunists looking to make a buck. I mean, if you you like watches do yourself a favor in britain put yourself on the list get the watch and then ask yourself if you want a blue dog sky dweller you might want it and if you don't you're in a great position to make a buck and it's the way we play the game these days okay so that's sort of a moot point here in japan uh there are no lists here there's uh well here in japan there's either you get lucky or you develop a relationship and wink wink they happen to have something when you turn up um anyway let me know what you think about any of the stuff i said uh what's coming next the gmt master 2 pepsi the p cereal which i want to go back to uh rsc and have the coke uh put on the uh the coke insert inserted i i think i'm a coke man that was the perfect uh that was the perfect insert, I think. Not as not as mundane as the all black, which has its points, and not as colorful as the Pepsi. Just a bit of beautiful red. Anyway, I don't know why I'm showing you the the Seiko 5 as I talk about the GMT Master 2. But anyway, that's probably what I'm gonna put on in the next couple days. Let me know your horological thoughts. Take care, thanks for watching, see you next time.